Hello! This is the first video I've done for uh, my Stampin' Up! blog. I used to teach school and I did videos all the time with the kids. I decided it was about time I did one for you. This is called a double easel card and I'll have all these measurements and information on my blog. This is the card and of course you have to have a matching envelope. Now, when this opens, it opens that way. Of course, you can st the recipient can stand it for display, but it also opens like this as well, so you can put an additional message on the inside. Now, for this card, I used the Tropical Chick stamp set. Isn't that gorgeous? And the Framelits thinlets that match it. I also use the coordinating Tropical Escape papers and these are so pretty. They just, oh, I think this is my favorite. But then I look at this and I think, oh, that's really pretty and I love this one. But look at all these pretty colors. Just beautiful paper. And I also used something else. This is the stitched label framelits. And actually, it comes um, a set of two. But for this card, I used this piece because I wanted to frame the greeting on the outside of the card. So you can see that here. All right, let's get started. These are the pieces that you're going to need. Now, your card base is four and a quarter by 11, right? Scored at five and a half and folded in half. Now, the part that makes the easel is this piece. And this easel portion is cut at four by 10 and a quarter and you score it two times, two and a half and five. Well, this would be two and a half and that would be five when you put it into your paper trimmer. And then you fold it up like this. And this goes on the front of your card base, as you can see here. Then we'll attach these three pieces of designer series paper. And you can mix and match the other sides of any of these papers in whatever order you like. So you need three pieces. You need two pe I'm sorry. You need, yes, two pieces <laughs> that are two and a quarter by three and a fourth three and three-fourths, excuse me, and one piece that is three and three-quarters by five. All right, so let's put these together and you can see the magic happen. So we'll first just put some adhesive around the biggest part of this. And center it and adhere it. Now you can see the easel portion right now, but we have to make it pretty. So we're going to put this piece inside. Oh, I just love this paper. It's so pretty. I love things that coordinate the paper and the thinlets and the stamp sets. It just makes everything look so professional when it's finished and beautiful. Not just a hodgepodge of colors that may or may not match and papers that sort of kind of do. Stampin' Up! has this coordinating products thing down to a science. That's what first drew me to the company. All right, and I'm going to put this pattern on the front. 
So now you can see I've got three patterns like this. And remember, this is all the front of that long piece. This is the back. So it folds up like this. Now, I cut this piece out of that stitched all around framelit. And I used an oval, or I'm sorry, that would be a thinlet. I used an oval framelit for the thank you. And we'll just put that on here. We'll center it. There we go. Oh, you know what even looks pretty? Using a piece of designer series paper for this instead of just plain cardstock. I did that on this card, which is the same type fold, but look how pretty that looks. And we have some new ribbon that's shaped like leaves on a vine. Isn't that the coolest thing? I love that. All right, so now we're ready to put together. But before we do, I have some pieces all cut out. I wanted to show you how I did these colors. They're not just one dimensional, stamp this in pink and stamp this in green. Isn't that variation pretty? I mean, in nature, that's how they all look. So, we've got a piece of paper. And we'll start with the flower stamp. And I'm stamping it up first in Flirty Flamingo, right here. And then I'm going to take my sponge dauber and ink it up with Poppy Parade, which is darker. And I want to just put a little in the center of the stamp. And I'm kind of blobbing it because I don't want it to be, you know, in a circular pattern. That would just not look natural to me. <sighs> Huff on the stamp. Stamp it and look how pretty. I'll get that a little closer so you can see. All right. Then we're going to do the same procedure with the leaves. And I've got this leaf here. And this time I'm inking it with Lemon Lime Twist. And I've got some Call Me Clover. And I'm going to ink up the dauber with that. And you could do just around the edges of the leaves, darker if you like. Or you could kind of do a, you know, random huff on it a little bit. To restore the moisture and then look what you have isn't that pretty so using the framelits and thinlets that coordinate I've cut these out and we can put them together now you'll notice in this one I used there's also some coordinating um, well this is a leaf and a flower so I think that adds a nice dimension to it. So we're going to start with this. And first we want to lay down this. Now I want to just ad adhere it to the bottom and not this top part. So what I'm going to do is just put some adhesive right here so that I don't mistake and get it too far over and see now this is nice and clean because I did that once before I tried putting adhesive where I thought it would go here and I ended up with adhesive on the back and it was all sticky and what a mess so it works better for me that way now we want to slide in some of the leaves and petals and I've got some Stampin' Dimensionals here because the petals on the front, I want to pop up some more. So let's see, we'll start with this one first. And I want to put it behind that. But I want to make sure that it doesn't come out beyond the card. So when you put it in the envelope, it will fit. So I only need some adhesive on the tail end of it, just right here. And that 
just like that. I like the looks of that. Then, let's use this fern. And since only a little is going to be coming out at the top, I'm just going to pinch it and put some adhesive on the ends. Stick it under there so it kind of pops out. Just gives a little bit of dimension. You can see. All right, then let's put a flower there. Maybe right about there. I want to go into the oval a little so we're kind of creating a escaped shape. And then the next flower, I want to pop this one up. So I'll put a dimensional on the back. And I want to put it all about like that. So I've overlapped the other one a little. Now on the bottom, I'll put these two. Actually, this one has a little more monochromatic. I'll use that one. And I want to put it... I don't need that stem. It's not going to show, so I'm going to cut it off. And I'll put it right... Tuck it up in there. I don't want it to extend beyond the card. Right there. And then this one, same thing. You're not going to see the stem, and I want to be able to get the leaf up there far enough that it'll adhere. So it just tore the stem off. Okay. There. All right, now I need some on this side. So maybe we'll start with this one. I like how there's some differences of color here. And again, I don't need the stem. It's not going to show. So I'll just tore it off. And this will go behind like that. And tear off another stem. And I'll put this one on the front this time. But I'll angle it like this. And I'm going to use a flower so it will cover up where there's no stem there. I just think sometimes those stems get in the way if you're not going to see them. So now I'll put the flower right there. I popped that up. What do you think? Now this one has these dimensions, dimensional pieces on there, so that would be fine. And to finish this off, I'll do the inside like this one. I did that same type process with the sponge daubers on the inside. And since this says you're the greatest, I'm not going to put a sentiment here. That way I can write in whatever I like. Well, all of the directions and some more samples will be on my blog. And here are the measurements if you want to look at them one more time. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.